In this lesson, we will discuss about vulnerability management. Let's start by revising what a vulnerability is. Vulnerability is a weakness in a system. System could mean an operating system, an application, a piece of hardware or even configuration. When an application is developed, it undergoes rigorous testing. However, not all bugs can be identified by the testing team. Sometimes bugs are identified by end users. Now imagine you identified a loophole in Amazon site through which you can buy any item at $1. Such bugs might lead to serious security issues. These bugs are called vulnerabilities. Now you can either report this vulnerability to Amazon and help them fix it or you can keep exploiting it to your heart's content till they find it out on their own. Vulnerabilities like this exist in almost all the applications. Yes, even the ones developed by companies like Google, Microsoft or Amazon. So it becomes imperative that these vulnerabilities be reported and tracked. But there is a problem when it comes to the volume of these vulnerabilities. How many operating systems are there? There are hundreds of operating systems present in the world. Considering each version is a different operating system, that is, Windows 8 is different than Windows 10, which is again different from Windows 11. If we consider this, the number goes up to thousands. How about number of applications in the world? There are millions of applications. Again, considering every version is different, there will be tens of thousands of applications. Also, there are millions of different hardware devices that exist in today's connected world of IoT. And all these millions and millions of systems could have vulnerabilities. To report and track the vulnerabilities that were not identified by the product testing team, the industry came up with a system. They created a common database of all the vulnerabilities identified in all well-known or widely used applications, which is called the CVE, stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. These databases are maintained by few not-for-profit organizations like CV Mitre, CV Details, and the US government's NVD, National Vulnerability Database. According to the system developed by the industry, every vulnerability that is identified and reported will have an unique ID called the CVE ID. The syntax of the CVE ID is as follows. The name CVE followed by a dash and four digits representing the year in which the vulnerability was identified and again a dash followed by four or five digit number. Here is an example of a reported vulnerability. CVE 2021-40469 This CV ID represents the remote code execution vulnerability that exists in Windows DNS Server. Also, every vulnerability gets a score assigned to it indicating the criticality of the vulnerability. This is called CVSS stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System. This score is a number between 1 and 10. A vulnerability with a CVSS score between 0 0.1 and 3.9 is considered as low impacting vulnerability. Between 4 and 6.9 is medium. Between 7.0 and 8.9 is high and anything above 9 is considered as critical. Now let's try to apply these to a company. As an administrator, I am not bothered about all the vulnerabilities in the world. I am only concerned about the vulnerabilities that exist in the operating system or the applications that our organization uses. So can I use the CVE database to know vulnerabilities and try to map it to the applications that we use? 
again it becomes impossible because even in an organization we might be using tens of operating systems and hundreds of applications and when you consider all versions all together there might be around thousands of systems so we needed a tool that could do this automatically for us that's when vulnerability scanners were developed vulnerability scanners scan the organization's network that is it looks for operating system and all the applications installed on a machine and compares them with the cve database to see if the company is using any vulnerable version of any operating system or application it then produces a report listing all the vulnerabilities that exist in our network and also their criticality few of the popular vendors for vulnerability scanners include tenable nessus qualis qualis guard rapid7 nexpos openwas which is a open source vulnerability assessment system and we also have the basic but powerful nmap now how do these vulnerability scanners work most va scanners use some kind of scripting languages to scan the machines and the results are compared with a database of known vulnerabilities and vulnerability scanners can also detect weak configurations and passwords by performing small scale attacks some of the scripts in the vulnerability scanners look for registry values to identify the version and patch level of an application now that we have understood the background of vulnerabilities and vulnerability scanners let's take a look at what vulnerability management is vulnerability management is the process of identifying classifying prioritizing remediating and mitigating security vulnerabilities in systems like operating system applications etc and one should note that vulnerability management is not a one time activity and more of a cyclic process the vulnerability management life cycle looks something like this starts with discovery prioritizing assets vulnerability assessment reporting the vulnerabilities remediating the vulnerabilities and then verifying in the discovery phase all the assets in the network are identified which means making a list of all the servers routers switches access points printers etc however it is not done manually most companies use the host discovery scan feature in the vulnerability scanners the second phase is prioritizing assets here we prioritize the assets based on their criticality and risk level for example for a e-commerce company their web server is more critical than their internal file server defining priority will help in deciding the scan frequency and patching speed the third phase is assessment this is where the actual vulnerability scanning happens as discussed earlier we make use of vulnerability scanners to identify the vulnerabilities in the assets the identified vulnerabilities have to be reported vulnerabilities are usually reported based on critical criticality and risk level then we enter the phase of remediation where a subject matter expert or the administrator of the respective server will apply the patches or modify the configuration finally we verify if the patch is correctly applied or not by rescanning the asset this is the vulnerability management life cycle next let's understand how frequently these scans are run vulnerability scans are usually performed on a scheduled basis typically monthly once or quarterly once also scans can be run on a need basis called as ad hoc scans a solid example is when a new headline vulnerability emerges when this vulnerability assessment is performed the scans are configured to specifically look for the new vulnerability only once the vulnerability is identified and reported it has to be patched immediately vulnerability management team is only responsible for scanning and reporting and highlighting the risk of the vulnerability the actual remediation 
That is, the patching is done by the administrators of specific server. The speed at which the patch is applied depends on the criticality of the vulnerability. Most companies have a two weeks patching policy for critical vulnerabilities. That is, CVS score of more than nine. You might be wondering why two weeks? Two weeks seems like a long period. Why can't we do it immediately? The reasons could be, some patches require rebooting the server and some servers cannot be rebooted at, as per will. Most enterprise follow a strict change management process. Change management helps in reducing the risks associated with the change. That is, any change in the IT infrastructure will be carefully evaluated and approved. In some cases, patches cannot be applied immediately because of the business reasons. For example, the company could be an e-commerce company and it is a peak shopping season. So there might be a freeze on any changes. Or even worse, patches might not even be available for certain vulnerabilities. In such cases, we typically step up the security for the server. Check with the IPS team if there is a signature available to detect if and when the vulnerability is being exploited. If so, assign a high severity to it. We also increase the level of monitoring around the specific server of interest. Let's end this module by understanding how SOC teams work with vulnerability assessment teams. Most of the companies I have worked with, vulnerability assessment is a pretty small team. Often it is just one person team. So usually SOC team provides assistance in reporting and prioritizing the vulnerabilities identified in the scan. SOC team also coordinates between various teams for patching statuses. When a security analyst identifies a suspicious behavior on a machine, he or she might raise a ticket and assign it to the VA team to perform an ad hoc scan on the system in question.